start, you are warmly welcome to this uh, symposium on grand challenges in ecology, about where we are heading. This uh, symposium is organized by our research school in ecology, basics and uh, applications, and I'm really overjoyed to see so many ecologists in one place. So many people sharing the passion for finding out uh, how the world, the living world is uh, structured and why. And I think uh, in wondering that, uh, we actually join a very long tradition uh, starting, well, at the same time as, as mankind started, but also influencing how mankind has seen the world throughout uh, history. Uh, in some cases, ecologists, uh, in a broad sense, uh, have actually influenced the way we perceive of ourselves, we perceive of, of, of the world, in a very profound uh, case. In some cases, the person doing so has even been a Swede, like Carl von uh, Linné. In other cases, uh, not so. Uh, but in other cases, uh, we have sometimes uh, shaken the prevailing view of the world so, uh, so strongly that the person doing so has been mocked, uh, um, doubted, uh, and ultimately uh, proven right in the end. Um, of course, uh, this, uh, this profound influence didn't end centuries ago. It's something that we do all of the time. Uh, it's not long ago, long ago since uh, people like uh, Paul Ehrlich started applying just basic population models to the human population, uh, pointing out that uh, if we continue like this, uh, we have a problem, which has had a, an immense impact on, on policies uh, around the world. Um, we haven't always been achieving quite the impact that we have been aiming for, uh, even compared to, to other sciences, uh, I think it's quite sobering to, to hear Stuart Pym saying that uh, today we actually know more about the size of the universe than the number of species with which we share this planet. That's a, that's a fairly, fairly important uh, message. Now, of course, we want to, to see science uh, like this, like big idea pointed out by by uh, big minds. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not easy to be Michael Jackson. <laughs> the, uh, like uh, like uh, this view of, of, of science as something, uh, as big ideas uh, brought forward by, by single uh, uh, influential people, it's, it's easy to adopt. But of course, it isn't quite uh, true. What we should uh, realize is uh, that each and every one of these people making this con these uh, contributions, they have been immersed in a tradition. They have been uh, part of a prog progression of ideas, uh, and they have been uh, in a dialogue with uh, each other and, uh, and with the more and less uh, uh, scientific world around them. Now, the only thing that's uh, for sure is then that uh, ecology is uh, a science made of people. And uh, uh, people uh, formulating ideas and uh, scrutinizing the potential truth in uh, those uh, ideas. Now, uh, some of those uh, ideas uh, are small. Some are really big, some fly by, uh, are forgotten in a flash, and some seem to just uh, never go away. Uh, now, uh, there is the idea that uh, methods, new methods, they are something that really bring uh, science uh, forward. Uh, George Hale, the guy who, who found the Hale-Bopp uh, comet, uh, 
he claimed that there is uh, no method of advancing science uh, so productive as the development of new and more powerful instruments and methods of research. Now, if that is the case, then sure enough, uh, modern ecology is uh, ripe for a real uh, shakedown, for a real transition. Uh, we have seen basically uh, three decades of uh, powerful computers. Now we're seeing DNA sequencing power developing faster than computational power. So immense methodological uh, progress. Now, uh, if that's uh, true, then a big question is, what will we be using these methods for? Will we just be doing more of the same? Or will we actually be turning to new questions that we couldn't even think of uh, before? All of these things uh, are questions that we're going to try to address uh, during this uh, symposium. Uh, what this is all about is uh, reflecting on where we are and where we should actually be going, trying to pinpoint a few key challenges of today and some really big questions uh, of uh, tomorrow. And also asking a little bit about uh, what young ecologists uh, perhaps should be trained in, need to know uh, to make a difference uh, in our joint uh, science. Um, Now, uh, to, uh, to make, I mean, because that is uh, essentially what a research school is about. That's uh, training the next uh, generation of uh, scientists, uh, thinking about uh, what skills they may need, what questions they may uh, be asking. And that's uh, what we're going to try to contribute to uh, today. Now, to uh, get started, we have invited a few uh, prominent uh, ecologists from the forefront of uh, ecology, asking them what they would perceive of as uh, the really influential uh, questions uh, in their field, maybe more widely in uh, ecology, uh, what they themselves think of as uh, the big uh, questions uh, right now. Uh, we will have uh, Jason uh, Tulianakis, uh, who is a professor of uh, terrestrial ecology uh, at the University of Canterbury, uh, New Zealand. Uh, he is also a part-time um, uh, uh, chair in uh, ecology and biodiversity at the Imperial College uh, in London, or Silwood Park, actually. Yeah. Um, uh, Jason is particularly uh, has been extremely influential uh, in finding out how uh, communities of interacting species actually respond to environmental change. That's a really big question of uh, today. The second uh, invitee is uh, Elizabeth Crone, who is a professor of uh, uh, terrestrial uh, Sorry, she's of population biology uh, and dynamics. Population dynamics and population ecology, population ecology at Tufts University, uh, close to uh, Boston uh, in the US. Now, uh, Elizabeth uh, is uh, working very much at the intersection of uh, theoretical ecology and uh, natural history uh, and developing uh, ideas about uh, how to understand uh, population uh, dynamics. Uh, as the third person invited, we had Professor Anna Gordmark from the uh, Department of uh, Aquatic uh, Sciences, uh, who's been uh, thinking a lot about how, in particular, aquatic food webs are structured and how they respond uh, to change. Now, the unfortunate fact is that Anna is ill. Uh, so we will have uh, to do without her. And as I hope at least some of you have already heard, that means a change in the program of uh, today. So that uh, we'll squeeze uh, all the talks up uh, into the, this uh, morning part. Uh, 
and then uh, uh, we should be back here at 1.30 uh, to continue with the panel discussion. And the important thing is that the panel discussion continues on the themes drawn up uh, during these uh, talks, adding uh, depth and reflection to them. So please uh, come back for that uh, panel discussion, even if it's uh, after uh, lunch. Uh, and uh, that also means that uh, since you can't have uh, dinner at 3 o'clock, uh, there will be a break here when, again, we trust that we will not lose you. Please come back uh, to have a few beers uh, to meet all the interesting uh, speakers uh, around uh, 4.30. Uh, bring a lot of uh, cash and you will get uh, a lot of, of beer. Um, that's uh, more or less uh, it uh, before we let the uh, speakers loose. I just uh, quickly wanted to thank the people uh, working on, on making this uh, happen. Uh, uh, Jonas, uh, Helena and uh, Erik uh, as a part of the bigger ecological community. Without uh, further ado, we will pick uh, the next uh, ecologist from this, uh, from this uh, sea of science, uh, and uh, that will be uh, Elizabeth. Please.